Hey, how's it going? I am back to do a follow-up custom video for my guy, Tony T. Tony, what's up? We had a great conversation um, about him being a Virgo Ascendant, Pisces Sun, Eighth House Energy, I believe it was, right? Eighth House Stellium. The question about Saturn that Tony has is, what lessons is the universe, or what lessons are the universe teaching when Saturn is in Scorpio? And went on to say, you know, this talk about how, you know, Scorpio was the place where things go to die, you know, to rise again from the ashes like the phoenix. This is what I'll say. I'll start off by saying this, right? When the, when Saturn is inside of Scorpio, this is what happens, right? Saturn is there to, the determination is increased to a level of uh, the drive and ambition makes this placement just excel to a, a unprecedented level. Like there's an unwavering strength that is found here. Um, and you will notice, let me, let, me, let me tell a story so this way I can really um, explain to you and, and break it down and make it easier for myself as well. Um, when, the sat, when Saturn was actually inside of the sign of Scorpio, which was not too many years ago, um, I was going through something, right? I was, as a matter of fact, talk about ashes, right? I was brought down to the lowest of the low. And, you know, people who were looking after me or, you know, trying to guide me, they were not, I had this attitude that they were not efficient enough, that they were not, they didn't have the stature to tell me what to do and how to do it. And, and, and I was at my lowest point, right? So what happened was they tried to guide me to like, you know, wait around and stick, wait around and do this, or, you know, I didn't have to go out there into the work world or whatever the case may be, right at, at the immediate time. And I was like, I'm out, like I'm out. And it was not my, um, it was not my intent to go out and do something that I didn't want to do. However, it beat me being in the particular place that I was in, which was the ashes. I had to rise again, right? So I left out, um, you know, people turned me away from jobs here and there. I came back, I would go back every day, go back every day. Then the next thing you know, I had, I was, it was a bidding war going on. Two to three people wanted me at the same time. And, you know, I was in one interview that other people was calling. It was like, did you get the job yet? Because I got something that opened up. I want to give you the job over here. So now I got leverage, right? I chose the one that I wanted to choose. At the same time, I, um, you know, I started tutoring people in college, you know? So at this time I got a phone call list. Hey, can you do that for me again? I need you for the whole year, maybe a year and a half. Can you deliver? I'm like, okay, bet. So now I got this, I'm tutoring psychology, it was psychology, and I took a, another job where I was doing maintenance. This was heavy labor, like hard labor. I was doing maintenance all, yeah, I'd say about all day. It was like a full-time gig, however, it was temporary. You know, it was like for a season, maybe three to four months. So I took it anyway, you know, so I did both at the same time. Right now, mind you, I'm tutoring psychology, that's my own business, so I started my firm really based off of this energy that I'm talking about right here. So notice I mentioned psychology because Scorpio is the house of, you know, the eighth house rules Scorpio, it deals with psychoanalysis, right? So all of a sudden I get the gig doing psychology, go figure. Saturn is in Scorpio now, pay attention. So then, you know, I'm trying to figure out, at that time I couldn't figure out like, why did I have to pick up this other job, you know? But I figured it out now, especially that it's brought to my attention is that the hard labor that I was doing had to deal with my body. Like I was so intense during this whole period. And you know, Saturn stays around for about two to three years. So I, my energy was so intense during this time that I wanted to occupy all of my time. And I wanted to get a lot of money or as much money as I could and stack my money up so I could get out of the situation that I was in, right? And everything was falling right into plan. So what I'm saying is key word here is when Saturn is in Scorpio is structure. And it aligns well with Scorpio because Scorpio's determination is unprecedented. Like I can tell at that time, like I can feel it sometimes when the moon enters Scorpio. I'm very intense. I, I choose to work out my body when moon gets into Scorpio. I, I choose to wait now until it gets there so I can take advantage of that of that surge. Um. So, okay, so I'm doing psychology and I'm working my body. I'm working my body. Now at this same time, right? I was having sex more than usual. Like I was having sex at an all time, like it was bananas at, at one point, right? And at this time also, before this had occurred, before Saturn went into Scorpio, I was developing a, um, a webcam service. You know, I was participating in webcam activities and stuff like that before that had even transpired. So I guess you could say what Saturn was inside of 
uh, Libra before that, right? Because Libra is before Scorpio. So, you know, for me, Libra, seventh house, you know, deals with, um, I mean, second house, rather, in my natal chart, but in my own, um, you know, in my in my natal chart, second house, so it deals with personal finances. So it was only correct that I started dealing with things like that to me because that's what I felt the relationship should be based upon, right? So it dealt with relationship. Like I was doing webcam, like as a couple sometimes. But some people will like have sex frivolously, or maybe frivolously is not the right word to say. Some people will have sex for the fun of it, for leisure, like casual sex. And I used to be into that too, don't get me wrong, I'm a Pisces, like I'm, I'm, I'm a, I used to be a major slut. Probably still am to a degree, but um, my point here is that when Saturn's here, you can't just do it for fun. Like, and how do I know this? The reason why I can tell you this for real is because natally I have Saturn and Virgo. So I'm painstakingly have an analytical eye. Like I see, I don't let anything go from my eye, you know? And um, so what I did here was, I said, well, how, you know, and this was not even with me knowing what I know about astrology now, but what I started doing was I felt myself slipping. So now let's talk about death and transformation and all that falling because I seen myself having so much fun with the girls, right, that I felt myself slipping. And I mean, like, slipping off of my game. Like, if I stay having sex for too long of a time, like, I, I might make it back to the, to the spot too late, or I might wake up late in the day and be late for work, possibly, you know what I mean? And I seen that, and I was like, nah, I can't have this. And at the time, like, I was, like I'm telling you, I'm so intense that it was, like, worth it. It felt worth it to stay there. But my natal chart... Virgo and, and, and Saturn was also looking at this with a very observant eye and I'm like, well, where is the structure at to this sex? So I would like uh, wow my partners when saying that so they'd be like, well, what? What are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? And I'm like, for real, like, there has to be some structure here. Like, I want to, you know, I want to do it at a certain time. I want to be at a certain place. I want to be at this spot. I want to look at it from this angle. I want to see you there. I want to see you here. I want to see you go, right? And luckily for me, like, this was working for me. Like, you get yourself a cool partner, uh, and you'll see how this is happening. Um, you see how this happens, how this works for you, right? So even me, I was kind of amazed. Like, oh, wow, this is really going well. So I started putting two and two together because I was teaching psychology at the same time. I said, well, how can I make this so that people don't frown upon it? So what I did was I started using it as research. I was basically doing sex research is what I'm saying. Right, so I was doing surveys and stuff like that. Like I was, you know, I was doing all types of experiments, like real lab experiments. Because see, when you make things scientific, it's not frowned on by society, you know. And if you look into the inside of the world of academia, you know, whenever they talk about things such as sex, you know, they talk about death and the diseases and every and all of that that comes with sex. They don't talk about the healing aspects. They don't talk about how it makes you feel good or how you know bodies can help heal body, bodies. Like I don't see, and I've done tons of research, I still do research to this day, and I have yet to find the content that says, sex is good, sex is great, sex can be healthy. So I found this as an opportunity to tap into that pain and say, well, let me prove scientifically how this works. Or, and even to the point where how I told you I felt like I was slipping, well, if I spent too much time having sex, that I, it would take away from my growth, rising from the ashes and getting my money together to, to rise again. I was actually taking those notions of what I perceived to be slipping and incorporating them inside of the surveys and running the questionnaires with the people that was experiencing this sex with me and asking them questions and measuring it with a Likert scale, with a Likert scale, excuse me, to understand better you know, why we do the things that we do, especially as couples or people who think that we're couples or are we just having sex or are we just enjoying ourselves? Are we just having fun? You know, how much does it take away from the relationship or the intimacy if we track it or if we record it? You know, of course, you might have to have a, a woman who's kind of weird to do stuff like this with you. However, um, like I said, I was fortunate at this time. So Saturn wants structure no matter what no matter what, but dealing with Scorpio, right? And this is why I'm saying like, you can't do less than ethical things because Scorpio deals with eighth house, other people's money, joint resources. So this is where the, the jealousy and the possessiveness comes in with Scorpio. And that's why they say don't do that because you know, Scorpio could do something like revenge porn or you know, revenge sex even. Like they're very skilled when it comes to the libido. They know how to uh, starve their partner for sex. They know how to wield it on them. 
um, and be, can be overbearing. But my point is the, the jealousy and the possessiveness of the Scorpio is unmatched. You know, and that's why it's in the eighth house because this deals with marriage. This is why, you know, this is why I talk to the, to, to, to the, to the Tauruses like that. And I'll be like, you know, I know you guys like Pisces and Pisces like Taurus, which probably will be better with a Scorpio because Taurus, you want stability and Scorpio will give you that. They will be overbearing. They will stay committed when they finally get locked into something. That's how they move, you know, and a lot of the times they want to keep that a secret, you know, and that is another reason that I felt that my Virgo, uh, Saturn being in Virgo in my natal chart, uh, shed some light on Saturn being inside of Scorpio at that time to unearth the secrets that Scorpio always wants to keep. Doing research and being scientific about it shows the proof. So now we get to extract these secrets that are from the dark psyche, or I guess you could say just psychoanalytical. You know, that Scorpio a lot of the times knows and keeps under wraps because they wanted to benefit themselves and no one else. So with, with, with Scorpio being referenced to death, think of death more as transformation. Like it doesn't, you know, it means that some things have to have to leave the cycle in order for new things to be reborn, reborn in the cycle, you know? And the pattern that gets repeated or the pattern, not even that gets repeated, the behavior that is intense to the extent of detriment is not, good for Scorpio, okay? Because Scorpio can do things, like I said, that can be vengeful and it can backfire and it's not good for the structure. It's not good for everything that they work hard for. And a lot of that comes from wanting to merge, wanting to use that eighth house energy and not understanding that uh, they can attract the same things that they desire by keeping, you know, by, by turning it into structure. That's pretty much what I'm saying. If they learned how to turn sex into structure, Scorpio, I mean, Saturn being inside of Scorpio, it's like a no-brainer. You know, it's a no-brainer. But Scorpios, they are, they're pretty ethical people, though, when it comes to, like, couples. You know, they, they like this. See, once they're committed, they don't like being sluts. That's pretty much what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So they don't even like the I. They probably won't even like the idea of you know, having a sex industry, they probably rather just cheat or have sex with other women instead or something like that. Now, Tony, I got your, uh, your Instagram. I'm going to, I'm going to follow you on Instagram. Now here's to what you said about what you asked about, um, what, what do I think you should do as an entrepreneur? Um, I'm going to be real with you. I think you should do this, what we're doing right now, like conversing about those, uh, things that you have, that you, you know, these high ideals, these high ideas, these uh, metaphysical things, I think you should talk about that because you're, you're already into that, right? Not only that, you have, as a Pisces ascendant, you have a Virgo and a seventh house, which means that's your, uh, your relationships, business and personal. So let's say you started a YouTube channel like this, you can put your content out there and use keywords because like we said before, you know, like with Pisces, it's more like speak when spoken to. Um, these days, because we have the internet, like you can take the chance of starting by saying, okay, let me make one video and put the keywords that are relative to the things that people will search for on their own. And if they happen to luck up, if they happen to come across my video, then I luck up, then it's for me. You know what I mean? So you could take that type of chance. As a creator, a Pisces can get away with stuff like that. And then what will happen is your channel will grow based upon those uh, relationships, business and personal, is in the sign of Pisces, which means when you enter those keywords that are relative to what you are uh, talking about, which is like metaphysical things and astrology and stuff like that, you're gonna automatically bring those type of people who are like-minded to you. Um, what happens with this is also, is you know, this deals with Pisces energy, which is psychoanalysis, the metaphysics, um, you know, things that are within the subconscious mind, right? Because psychoanalysis really, you know, Pluto got that name for eighth house and everything because it actually runs trajectory to Neptune sometimes, right? So, uh, again, this is a great placement for you. Um, you also have Gemini in a midhaven, which deals with communication, 10th house for career. So even more, this is pointing you in the right direction to do something like this. Um, and this type of form will also help you do that because it deals with, you know, Gemini energy deals, that communication thing is like through sending email and, and you're gonna have, I think you do, I think you'll do very well. I think you'll do very well. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to see you there. Um, maybe we could share a show maybe once, once or twice, you know what I mean? Who knows?